for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith not of works lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. That said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching, uh, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's, uh, let's go to, uh, what do you think, baby? Let's do Zechariah <laughs> chapter 4. There ain't no 18, is it? I don't know. Man. Did Zechariah probably, chapter 4 go to 18? Probably 12 is the last yeah, verse. I don't like, know. Probably like 12. Let's, go, let's do Zechariah chapter 4 verse 8. You know what I'm saying? At least we get one of her numbers in there. It's Zechariah chapter 4 verse 8. Zachariah say anything about Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, four go up to 14. Huh? Four go up to 14. But, uh, it's it's Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. What else? His hand shall also finish it. You know what, baby? <clears throat> he said his hand shall also do what to it? Finish it. He said it also finish it. Keep going. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. For who has despised the day of small things? He said who is what I was trying to get to. Who has despised the day of what? Small things. Let's get some context. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to understand what we're reading and why we're reading it. So if we look at this, you know what I'm saying? This was a time T when when what was going on. Zachariah. That was when we was rebuilding the wall. We was rebuilding the wall. And rebuilding right? the wall. Right? Or temple. not really rebuilding the wall. We're building the wall. We were we were rebuilding the temple. Here, right. The temple, right? Temple, yeah. And not just any part of the temple. We were laying the foundation of the temple. Right, so you had the foundation of our temple, but why is this special to us that we we land the foundation? Notice that we saying rebuild it. We used to have one. Whoa. Which one was better, the one that we about to build or the one that we built? The one that we built, the one. Because who built that one? Solomon. And who, what 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 did he have to build that? What type of type of resources? He had uh, cedar wood, gold, and abundance. I mean, he's the richest man. Yeah. Right. So he had all the resources to build whatever he want. We coming out of captivity at this point, yeah, right? We're kind of poor now. I mean, what did we do? Did we win a war to come out? Nah. How'd we get out? The king had to let us go. What's his name? Cyrus? Yeah. I mean, Cyrus just said you can go. And what did he say? He said, I'm going to give you all my money or I'm going to give you some of it. <laughs> he said, I'll give you everything you need to build it. So we building this on a, on, a, on a gift, on charity. On a grant. On a grant. This thing, it's not even like, it's not, it's not like, okay, we run the show. Let me just put this together. It's, uh, it's charity. It's grant. You know what I'm saying? Somebody like, uh, I see you need it. Go ahead and do that. Whatever you need to take care of it. If somebody gives you money, like, all right, look, I, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you need, get you a couple pair of clothes. You're going to go to the store and get the most expensive clothes? Mm -hmm. Gucci, 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 Gucci. Yes. No! We know you will. You know what I'm saying? That's not a question. I wasn't talking to you. We know that you will. You know what I'm saying? But you're you going to go in and be like, you know what I'm saying? Let me just give me a couple pairs of, you know what I'm saying, pants for work. You know what I'm saying? Let me just give me some, you know what I'm saying, some pants, maybe a t shirt. And you'll rewear them same pants until you got your first paycheck. Well, that's what we did. We, uh, you know what I'm saying? We ain't about to take it. He's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We can put the foundation and take it. Just, you know what I'm saying? This is what it's going to take. So we got the money, we get it. So this wasn't as glorious as the first temple. Right? So when we putting it together, you can imagine some of the people. Matter of fact, grab a, grab a, 
It's uh, Nehemiah, the last chapter in Nehemiah. Is it Nehemiah? Are you sure? No, Ezra. The last chapter of Ezra. Are you sure? Well, yeah, because at the end they was talking about I want to say Zephaniah 1. The elders was crying He's about right. how it didn't look it's like the old one. But that was, are you sure it's Ezra? I think that's Ezra. Because it, uh, it was a story. But oh, was last a story book of Ezra is, is, is reprimanding when they messed the up. people. Okay, well, it's before that then. Whenever they first laid it and built it, I don't know. Now, you, for now me. you got me second guessing. Grab for me Zechariah 1. Give me like verse 5. It's a long shot. If this right, they're going to think we planned this, baby. Zechariah 1? Yeah, Zechariah 1, verse 5. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words, my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us. Zechariah 2. Uh, it ain't Zechariah. No, it's not in Zechariah. What I'm looking for ain't in Zechariah. I know what you're looking for. Let me, let me check a couple places real quick, and then I'll let you know. Right? But we look at it. We was, we was putting this place together. We had King Solomon. Right? King Solomon came. Let's, I mean, let's just back that thing up. David. David running around. Right? David was told he's going to be king. But there was somebody occupying that space already. There was another man that, that, that the Most High God made king. His name was King Saul. Right? So King Saul had the crown. David was told while King Saul has the crown that he was going to be king. And was anointed as king before King Saul came on. The, came, uh, before King Saul gave up the crown. Right? So David running around. King Saul, you know, kind of get that feeling that David the next one up. You know what I'm saying? Had a little bit of animosity against David. Try to get at David a few times. David, while running around, running from King Saul, because David's like, that's a man of the Most High God that he put in place. I'm not going to kill him. Even if the Most High God say, this is my kingdom, I'm not about to kill him. You know what I'm saying? Let whatever happened to him go happen to him. That ain't going to be me. So David running from him because King Saul trying to kill him. He don't want to engage in that fight. Right? David having wars. Wars on top of wars. Wars on top of wars. It's the same David that killed the, uh, killed the giant, right? So, wars on top of wars. Wars on top of wars. Most high God calls him a bloody man. Right? Because he's killing folks. Right? So, he's having wars on top of wars. David wants to build the most high God a temple. Right? On fire for the most high God. You know, the Christians say, you're on fire for God. You know what I'm saying? He's on fire for the most high God. Wanted to build the, man, build the most high God a, a temple. But, most I got say, you too bloody, you can't do it. Right? So David got everything together. He started he start, he start saving up, you know what I'm saying, materials to build the temple. And he got the schematics. He got exactly how it should be built. He passed that along to his son, Solomon. Right? Solomon get on the scene. Solomon start putting that thing together. Solomon had even more resources that he could put towards it. Solomon got help from other nations to put the David's plans together. That's what y'all ever heard, the Freemasons? That's where the Freemasons get their thing. It's a man named uh, Hiram. All right? Hiram. That's, that's, where, uh, that's where Freemasons, they claim that Hiram, you know what I'm saying, was one of the Freemasons, and he kind of set that thing in motion in some way, shape, or fashion. You know what I'm saying? One of them tried to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? He used to come to the Bible study. You know what I'm saying? He tried to feign himself like he is something else. You know what I'm saying? Like he is just interested in what we teach. You know what I'm saying? going to sit me down one day, invite me to lunch. Well, actually, a couple times, invite me to lunch. We talk it through. Turned out he is a darn Freemason. He's going to be like, listen, you know what I'm saying? Just doing, trying to get me to join. I was like, yeah, okay. Ain't going to be me. I was like, so Hiram? Oh, Hiram is the one who? He, has, he designed the temple that David, that, uh, that, that uh, Solomon built. I was like, oh, Hiram designed it, huh? So them design didn't come from God giving to David, and David didn't pass them thing down. I mean, literally, the book said it come from God giving to David, and David passed it to Solomon. Showed him that in the book. He was like, well, see. I was like, yeah, well, see. Well, I ain't got no business eating with you right now. I'm going to go ahead and talk to you later. You know what I'm saying? You can't play with these people. These people make a mess out of you. But we know the history. That's why we talk about this. So let's get back to the history, right? So you got Solomon. King Solomon, he get it, right? And he said, I'm going to put that thing together. Glorious temple. Says a long prayer. And the Most High God says, I hear you. Right? So this is our pride and joy at this time. Beautiful temple. People came from around the world to see it. Right? So we go. We move on. King Sin. Eventually, we get taken out of the land. Right? Not just Israel, but also Judah. Remember, we, we got split into two houses after Solomon. Right? So not only the north, but also the south is taken out. As part of that, our temple gets destroyed. 
when our temple gets destroyed, most of our people or a lot of our people are either killed or taken into Babylon. All right. After we were taken into Babylon, then uh, who came next? The Persians. Yeah. All right. So then the Persians came. The Medes. All right. The Medes came first. Yeah. The Medes. The Medes came. Then the Persians came. You know what I'm saying? And after the Persians came, the Greeks came. All right. But while the Persians were there, the Persians said, "Y'all can go back." I was King Cyrus. He said, "Y'all can go back to y'all land." You know what I'm saying? I mess with the Most High God. I like what y'all talking about. Y'all can go back to your land. So they let us back in our land. So then we we're at a point of rebuilding, right? Trying to get everything back together. That's what drives us. That's what the starting place is that drives us into Yahushua, right? About 400 years passed and all that. And that's how we get. When we get to the New Testament, we'll dig into it a lot more. But you will see when you're dealing with the New Testament, you see like the Pharisees seem real strict about certain things. And as a Christian, we look at it and be like, see, they just, they don't even have a heart of the law. You know what I'm saying? Like, they use the law to punish people, but that's just because we didn't understand, right? When the Pharisees is like, no, don't even carry that mat on the Sabbath, right? What you doing? Don't even help an ox out of the out of the ground on the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? Like, they like, don't do none of this stuff on the Sabbath. The reason why they did that is because we got kicked out of our land for disobeying the law. So they like, listen, don't even come close to disobeying the law. Right? They put barriers around barriers, right? The law is one barrier, then they said, okay, let me put two or three barriers around that. So you can't even get close to breaking this law. Right? And that's how it gets. So when you get to Yahushua, by that time, things that started off in a good place, and that's how all of this stuff is, it starts off with a good place with a good intention, but it doesn't have the proper execution because people are not steadfast to what the law is saying. They're not steadfast to what the instruction actually says. So you end up getting to Yahushua, and Yahushua has to address all these things and correct these things. And all because of misunderstanding of all the laws and what we can do, we miss Yahushua, right? We don't recognize him when he comes, right? So this is the, this is the precursor to what we read, right? When we start off reading in Zechariah, this is the precursor to it. They building something, right? They putting something together to kind of get to that, all right? And it's small. It's not what it used to be. Right? It's not what it used to be. You ain't got to keep looking for it. It's not what it used to be, right? We is, we is looking for a place where when, when they was building it, you had people that were screaming and happy, but you had other people that was crying. Because half of them was looking at, this is nothing like our temple. Right? My daddy told me about the temple. Or some of them really no, old. Really I it. remembered yeah, the temple. Really saw it. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not it. Like, I've been there before. You know what I'm saying? What you mean? You know what I'm saying? I've seen it with my own eye. They looking like, this is not it. So it was a day of small things for them. So if you go back to Zechariah, what was it, 4? Yeah. Zechariah 4, uh, what was it, 9? Verse 10. It's Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. Where is Haggai? This is on Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. Yeah. Mm. It is in Haggai. It is, because it ain't in it ain't in other. It is in Haggai. I think it's Haggai. Uh, I think it's Haggai too. Uh, Could be one. It's Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side? Mm -hmm. Thereof. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which thou, which through which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Mm -hmm. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Mm -hmm. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Here's the next chapter. People. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flag roll. Why does the flag roll there? And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. Uh -huh. The and a roll, it's talking about, you know, words. You know what I'm saying? You got a rolled up piece of paper with words on it. Watch this. 
And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits. Mm -hmm. And the breadth thereof, 10 cubits. 20 cubits. That's like 20 arms, like this. You know what I'm saying? 20 arms. Then he said unto me, This is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. For everyone that steals shall be cut off as on this side according to it. Mm -hmm. And everyone that swears shall be cut off on that side according to it. Mm -hmm. I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that swears falsely by my name. And right. it shall remain in the midst of his house. He said, These words, this flying scroll, he said, Everybody who steals or who swears falsely, they're going to be cut off according to what these words say. Right? He's talking about judgment. This is our law. He gave a man a vision of, it's going to come a day, the same words, we're going to be judged by these words. Right? That's why it's important for us, when we look at it, we're dealing with a day of small things. This right now, it's five people in this whole room. Right? Last week, I think, the week, you know what I'm saying, I think the last video had about 10 views on it. On YouTube, at least. Not, not on Facebook, it's a little more. But, you know what I'm saying? On YouTube, you know what I'm saying? It's like 10 views on it. Right? It's a day of small things. Right? But if we look at it, and we look, well, the Most High God is talking about judgment. It's no different than what we're dealing with there. It was small. We're looking at it. We ain't like, man, this ain't nothing, man. People are sad. Like, man, we used to be something for real back in the day. But this ain't. This ain't nothing. Right? And what did that lead to? That led to 400 years later, the Pharisees added on to the law and ended up putting us in a position where we don't even recognize our Messiah when he came. What do you think is happening now? It's a day of small things. We build it, right? Years going to pass and the Messiah coming back. Are we going to be the ones to recognize it? It all starts with something small, though. Right? And I'm not just talking about us here. I mean, it's a good example because we here. But even for the, for the people watching in and in other places, the small thing is you and obeying the Most High God. You don't have to wait for something to appear to you in the sky or for the, the moon to turn red. Like You can't wait for that. That's when it's big. If you don't got it at that point, chances are you don't have it. We have to get it while it's small. You know what I'm saying? You talk to these investors. You know what I'm saying? The, you know what the investors do? They wait. And when the housing market was booming, is that the time that they was in it? Not really. Heck no. They say, you know what? 2008, that thing gonna crash. I was watching, the, it's a movie on Netflix. I forget what that thing called. The Big Short. But that's when them boys got into that thing. You know what I'm saying? As soon as that thing crashed, they say, okay, yeah, now we can do it. The Big Short. Right? I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't talk this language to us. All right? They don't talk this language to us. But you can take their principles and you can look at it and be like, that's how you do it. You do it when it's small, when it's down. Right? That's when it costs less to get in. Right? You get in. You put yourself in and then you, you maximize your profits with it. Same thing with the most high God. It's small now. Obey the man. Just do what the man say. Learn it. Our number one goal has to be to hear and learn the word. It can't be nothing that come over that. It can't be nothing that come over us hearing and learn the word, especially if we don't know it. We don't know the word. That don't make it. Just don't. It doesn't make good sense. We don't know the word. We're not comfortable with the word, and then we put anything above it. That just has to be because if our goal is life, right? If the goal is spend the rest of our life with the Most High God. That has to be where we are. Otherwise. We setting ourselves up for failure, All right? We setting ourselves up to, for distraction, for for fooling around, and end up being gone, like just gone without knowing. None of us gonna be able to count these days, All right? Book said you got you got hairs on your head of what I mean. You got you got breath you got breath in you of what account are is of you. In other words, you got breath, but what of it is your fault? I'll tell my barber he cut my hair. And we were just kind of talking through stuff. And he was like, he, you know what I'm saying, he, he, uh, he grew up from uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. So he was like, you know what I'm saying, he was trying to tell me, he was like, you know what I'm saying, he'd be rocking with me, but he, you know what I'm saying, he, think, he thought Jesus wasn't God. He was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying, it's like just some silly stuff. People trying to tell me Jesus was God. And I told him, you know, he presented his argument about Jesus not being God. And I was like, no, I appreciate you, brother, because that made sense to you at that point. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, and I appreciate it because, you know what I'm saying, nobody, you probably had nobody explain it to you that way. You probably talked to a Christian who believed he three, 
And you like, that don't make sense. And so now the opposite for you is to just say, well, Jesus is different from God. You know what I'm saying? It's like you had to, that's how you figured it out. But nobody really taught you. That was just instinct. You know what I'm saying? Because in your mind, God is one. And I was like, and that's the right instinct. You, you, against, you against the Trinity. You ain't against Jesus being God. You know what I'm saying? I was like, let me explain. You know what I'm saying? He was like, so how do you got two people? He was like, still don't make sense. I was like, let me explain. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, this is just my understanding. It's not necessarily what the Bible says. It's a way you can, it can make sense for you. I was like, you take affinity, right? You a man of numbers. You take affinity. You know what I'm saying? You cut affinity in half. Then how, what you got at the end of the day? You got two infinities. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I take a slice, let me just take a small slice of infinity. Well, that's going to go on forever just like infinity. So I was like, well, Yahushua is the only man that came from the Most High God Spirit that we know is forever. Right? He's the only man that came directly from his spirit. If you take it back, who else came from his spirit? Adam. Adam. But what was different about Adam? Adam was a man. Adam was a man, but what was different about Adam? He grew up from the ground. He came from the ground. Right? Adam didn't come from a woman. He came from, a, from the ground. Right? But what do you notice about Adam? He died. He died. Then what happened? What happened before he died, though? He had sons. He had sons. Yeah. So there's something about Adam... Right? That lives forever. What are we all called? Sons of who? Adam. Right? So Adam was created. He has a child. And the spirit moves on. God is not breathing and recreating a man each time. He, he gave his spirit to one man. And from that one man, spirit just keep on coming. Keep on coming. You having kids. All these kids get spirits. All these kids get spirits and get life. Right? But he gave it to one. He didn't, you don't see nowhere in the book where he said, I'm just recreating these men. No, you come from the woman. So now you already got a spirit that's coming from Adam and Mary and then God's spirit also. Right? That makes this man different. He has the infinity with him. That makes him infinity. How are you going to cut him off? Right? So he looked at him like, oh. You know what I'm saying? You know, he liked that type of stuff. He's like, oh. Yeah. So I, was like, I was like, all right. The only reason that works, I was like, that was all me. You know what I'm saying? That was all me. That's how I understand things. I was like, the only reason that works, though, is because I got the book. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can look at the book, and then whatever wisdom that mo the Most High God has given you naturally, just like he gave uh, Mary the spirit to have a child, that thing rebirths, and you can look, and now you see things different. I was like, it's all in the book. Right? But you look at it, and you're able to, to, to really understand the book, and you really to understand... Um, how things are, are, are playing out and and how the world works in a different way, right? You can see through all of these lies, all this stuff that these people tell you. It's just that we have to get to a place where learning the book, appreciating the book, and, and just kind of moving God's plan forward is something that's special to us, all right? It has to be special to us because it ain't going to be special to none of these sinners, all right? And there's work out here that got to be done, all right? And we got to do it. There's other people out there that got to do it too, but we can't sit back and be like, oh, let's, let's, what are the other people doing? You know what I'm saying? We got to say, we got to do it. When we see the other people, we say, hey, how you doing? Let's do it together. Till we see them, we can't spend the whole, whole life looking for them. That's what a lot of people are doing. They spend their whole life just, I mean, it has to be somebody out there. That's cool. I did that for a while too. We did that for a while too. It has to be somebody else out there. We did that for a while, and it is somebody else out there. But guess what? We'll see them when we see them. Right now, it's work that got to be done. What I'm going to do, keep waiting? I ain't with the Most High. Ain't, most High God ain't never called us to wait. He called us to obey today. You wait to do your own mess. All right? When you come to the Most High God, you got to obey. That's why we come here. That's why we come to learn the law. All right? That's why we read through Deuteronomy. All right? Let's open up. Where we leave off uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Thy God shall bring thee into the land where you go uh -huh. to possess it, uh -huh. and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. All them sites. You know what I'm saying? Get them out. Cast their butts out. 
All right, when he named all those nations, those are nations of people, different nations. He said, get all these nations out. What did he say after that? Seven nations greater and mightier than you. He said, these nations are greater and they mightier than you. In other words, they'll whoop your butt. These seven nations that'll kick your darn butt. He said, get they butts out, though. That don't even sound intuitive for us. But at this point, we trust the most high God. He's like, man, you brought us through some wild stuff now. Right? That was his goal. He was like, let me take y'all through something so y'all know who I am. Y'all messing around. If I just walk y'all right up in here, y'all y'all won't know who y'all darn dealing with. Let me take y'all through some stuff so I know that y'all rely on me. He'll tell you about it. Keep going. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Uh -huh. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto he them. He said, thou shalt make no covenant with them. In other words, don't you make a darn agreement with, with them. It's natural. I mean, you come in, it's wartime. You come in dressed for war. You ready to kick some darn butt. Most high God said we can have this. Get out of our darn way. People get scared, right? We don't learn. They are scared. They are scared. They are nervous that we are coming up. They heard we kicked all these other people butt. So they start getting nervous when we come up. We're going to learn about that, right? So let's say they get scared. They're going to be like, listen, listen, listen. I should make peace. Tell you what, instead of killing us now, how about, you know what I'm saying, we draw y'all water for you. We become slaves to y'all. Y'all just let us live in our own land. Let us get this town, and we'll do all the work around here. We'll serve y'all. Right? That might be an attractive deal. I'm like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Economically, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, let's make this agreement. Let's put it on paper. He said, don't you make no agreements with these people. Nor, what else? Don't make a covenant or what? Or show any mercy. I mean, they just crying. I mean, the kids, beautiful little black babies, just in there crying, just. Mm -hmm, don't, yeah, yeah. And you be like, man, I mean, you a good God fear, man. You don't want to kill nobody, kid. What the Most High God say? Don't show no mercy. You chop his darn head off. That thing's that group. I mean, I could never serve a God. That's cool. If you could never serve a God, that how you do something like that. I understand. I get it. Like, I get it. I can, like, that, that's why I don't be messing. These Christians, once you expose them to some of this stuff, and they had it difficult, like, I see why you're a Christian. You know what I'm saying? I see. I understand. You know what I'm saying? You had to get yours dressed up. And you, because you really don't mess with this guy. You don't mess with this one. You know what I'm saying? You mess with, you mess with, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Hot dog on the stick, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, that's what you mess with. You know what I'm saying? You mess with the, you mess with the Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Hanging, you know what I'm saying? At a like 45 degree angle, heck. Tilted over, you know what I'm saying, with the long flowy hair right here. The one, like, the, the one with the perm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you mess with that G. Curly hair. You know what I'm saying? You mess with that G. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to the real with, with the the real thing, it's like, do you still serve God when you expose to everything that he is? Like this is the same guy that told you, have no mercy. Women, children, men, kill them all. This is that guy. Right? It's two things you can do. You can look at that and be like, oh, I could never. Or you can be like, well, you God, let me try to understand. Right? Let me try to understand. Let me try to figure out why is he doing that. Let's hear about it. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Your daughter shall not give unto his son. He said, your daughter you shall not give unto his son. Nor his, nor his daughter shall thou take unto your son. So you can't make they people a part of your people by marriage, nor can you make your people a part of his people by marriage. He said nothing, right? Because he knew what we was going to do. We were going to walk up. We were going to be like, all right, let's make an agreement. God said we can't make an agreement. All right, we can't make an agreement. I'll tell you what. I just showed mercy on you. God said we can't show mercy. All right. knew what we were going to do, right? Just marry, marry my daughter or, you know what I'm saying, give me your daughter and marry and then we'll be alright. Right? Technically, you want us now. Most I got like, don't even try. <laughs> don't marry either. Right? Don't show mercy, don't make no agreements and don't marry them. Get rid of all of them. Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me. They knew what they was going to do. Y'all going to start worshiping these people's gods. He said, I already know how it's going to play out. Right? This is the stuff. The most I got, most, a lot of people look at this and they be like, you know what? 
God, guess what God don't like? Guess what he don't like? Because he said don't marry these people. Guess, guess what that proves that God don't like? Canaanites. Yeah, that too. <laughs> interracial marriage. That's what he does. Man. He's not into the interracial marriage. Right? Don't you be met, T. Don't you. <laughs> Daniel. Don't you dare. Right? You got to marry a strong black. Everybody let Y'all need to cut this stuff out. <laughs> right? But that's what they're telling. I'll be watching my online all day going back and forth. It ain't a heap. If, uh, what she say? She said, she said, if you, if you marry a Gentile, then your kids ain't Hebrew. Whether you're a man or a woman. She said, I was like, and so I looked at the comment, I'm like, surely somebody about to check her. And it ain't nobody say nothing. Yeah, that's right, sis. Black power. I was like, man, y'all need to cut Y'all don't know nothing about our law. So they must talk to him, T. That Boaz's wife oh, good was gracious. a Moabitess. Grab uh grab Luke for me. Which is of the lineage of the Messiah. Grab Luke for me. I love it when T be you know what I'm Come with that good stuff. <laughs> good gracious. What is that? Luke three or Luke four? Oh, uh, the genealogy? Yeah. Uh three, I think. I think grab Luke three for me. I think it's three. Because, mm, mm, mm. I mean, it's like, what they going to do with that, T? Uh -huh. I'll be trying to figure out. I'll be like, y'all must not even picked up the book before. Y'all ain't never even read the darn book. Moses had a wife. Oh, my goodness. Before we grab Luke 3, grab Numbers 12. We're going number 12 first, then we're going to go to Luke 3. I mean, we do, let's just talk about it for a little bit. Because you know what? One thing that God hates, ain't it, ain't, it, ain't it like seven things that God hates, even eight that he abhors? You know what the third one is? Got to be interracial marriage. <laughs> it had to be interracial marriage. That had to be listed somewhere. I don't know what these people problem is. They get to run their mouth. They was running their mouth. Tell me this ain't Hebrew Israelites in 2018. This is Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. And Miriam and, May, and, Miriam and Aaron. Spake, the Hebrew Israelites, a.k.a. Miriam and Aaron, the Hebrew Israelites said. Spake against Moses because the Ethiopian woman whom he had the who? married. Who? Ethiopian woman. Uh-oh. Whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. That's a Gentile. Ain't no other way to slight that thing. Ethiopian woman? That's a Gentile. There ain't no Hebrew. Let's hear about it. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not Look spoken that. also by us? They took it so serious. They said, Moses, you ain't the only one now. You marrying this Ethiopian woman, I don't understand why. You need to get you a Hebrew. That's what they told her. You, you need to get you a, a nice Hebrew woman. We Hebrews. But you don't marry this Ethiopian woman. That's crazy. They looking like, has the Lord only spoken by you? You know why they would tell him something like that? Because they need Moses to listen to him. They trying to tell him, Moses. The most I God talked to us too, and I'm trying to tell you something. Don't you people try to do that? See, let me tell you. Man of God, I'm a man of God too. And the man of God, oh, he's lucky I can't remember this book good enough. What is that? Uh, oh, you take too much upon yourself? No. I'm going I'm to try this, and I know this is not going to be right. Give me 1 Kings 5. What are you trying to get? Like, what are you trying to get at? Um, I, I'm trying to even to think of it. It's uh, the prophet, prophet telling the other prophet to go the same way or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Where, where I'll find it. We ain't going to take too long on it. 1 Kings 5. If they ain't it, we ain't even going to, you know what I'm saying? We just going to keep going. I feel like it's First Kings five. First Kings five. First Kings be. five. Solomon was still alive. Nah, ain't it? Second Kings five. That's too far. Ain't it? Maybe not. Try First Kings fifteen. Uh, first Kings fifteen. Ain't that? Ain't that? Uh, ain't that? Uh, Elijah though. Look at him. Hmm. Uh, fifteen. No. That would have been King Jeroboam, right? It would have been King... It would have been the tail end of King Jeroboam. Yeah, so it's towards the beginning. Hold on. Was that... 
Hold on, hold on. I gotta get back into history. Which one? Which one came first? The prophet that went to Jeroboam and Jeroboam tried to get at him, but his hand withered. That's it. That's what that? I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It's the same thing. This is, okay. It's yeah, that's what I'm talking about. His hand withered. I think it's in 13. That's what he sent him to do. He sent him to go. He sent, sent him to go talk to Jeroboam, and his hand withered. Oh, on his yeah. way back. First Kings 13. Find what I'm looking for if you don't mind. Uh, if you want. You want. What did I say? Four. Five and 15. Yeah, it's 13, yeah. 14. You want 13, 14. 13, 14? Yeah. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 14. Watch the book. This is what people do. All right? This is what people do. And went after the man of God. Wait, uh -huh. wait, 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 wait. wait. We'll, we'll do 11. Do 11? So this is, this is 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 11? Yeah. Okay, this is 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the mm -hmm. words which he had spoken unto the king, and they told also their father. Mm -hmm. And their father said unto them, What way did he go? Mm -hmm. For his sons had seen what what way the man of God went. The prophet looking for him. Which came from Judah. Watch it. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the donkey. And they saddled him the donkey. Look, he went out searching for this man. Watch it. And he rode thereon and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. Look. And he said unto him. He found the man of God. He is sitting under an oak. Watch what he said to him. Are you the man of God that came from Judah? He said, are you the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Uh-huh. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. Yeah. And he said, I may not return with thee nor go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. Why? For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink no water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou came. Nor turn again, but to go by the way that thou came. Uh huh. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as you are. Mm -hmm. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee unto thine house, that Look he may that. eat bread and drink water. That's, he, what, that's what these people will do to you. But he lied unto him. That's what these people will do to you. Right? You get to talking, I mean, you get to talking and just letting them know, man, look, this is what the words say. You know what they're gonna say? I understand the word too. I understand the word too. I get I get the word too. And this is also what the words say. Right? I'm a prophet. I mean, God spoke to me and told me this. You know what I'm saying? God put it on my heart to do this. Well, listen, God put it on my heart too. This is also what he said. Right? We gotta be able to look at what we look at. It just be a movement. This is what the most high God say. Listen, this is what I'm reading. This is it. I'm not spending a whole lot of time going back and forth with nobody. Most high God tell, listen, most high God tell me and say, you know what? Don't eat no bread in that place. Somebody come up to and offer me bread. You look like the devil. <laughs> no, straight up. I mean, that has to be our attitude. We can't make no, you know what I'm saying? We can't make no, no, no side deals with these people. No compromise. Our attitude has to be no compromise. What do you think he was teaching us with the Canaanites? Otherwise, somebody would come along to you, tell you something nice, and you got it. That's it. You know what's the cold part about this story? Who dies? The prophet that lied or the prophet or the man of God that did what the man of God told him? Or was started to do what the man of God told him? I mean, what the Most High God told him? The man of God died. The man of God who told him, no, nah, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Most High God already told me I can't do that. Prophet lied to him like, no, nah, well, the angel appeared to me and told me that I need to take you back home with me. The man of God died. Most High God already told him what to do. He told you what to do. So now you're going to let somebody come up to you who didn't prove nothing to you. He didn't line nothing up to you, and you're just going to go with it. That's our problem. We sit here under these pastors, and we they haven't proved anything to us. Matter of fact, we sit here with questions. Question, scared to ask these pastors. You know who they ask? Me. They ask me. You got a pastor that you pay. You give him money. I ain't never asked you for nothing. You give him money weekly and won't ask him a question. Sometimes them ask, I mean, you just, you know what? They just don't want, they don't want the pastor to think that, you know, you just, you know, being rebellious or trying to start trouble. Start some darn trouble. It's all right. You be all right. your soul on the line. You better start making that mess. Ask them some questions. Figure it out. Make them prove it, too. That's what it's about. Because this, this is what people will do to you.
Go back to uh, number two. I mean, number 12. That's the same thing that, that Miriam and Aaron tried to do. They looking like, oh, you know that God ain't only like we. And they were prophets. The man of God was dealing with a real prophet just now. But the prophet lied. He was a real prophet of God, but he lied. Don't think that just because these people, you might view them as men of God and real people who really had experience. That's why we start off in the beginning. We say, even if you had a speak the, uh, speaking tongue or had the gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience, if you continue to sin, it can and will be used against you in the day of judgment. Nobody gets a pass. Most of our God not say, okay, well, since I did that for you, or since I did that with you, or since you did this for me, you got to pass. No, boy, so you, so you sin, I forgot all that. All that deals off the table. We good. Day one, we good. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you talking about? Most high God ain't think about that. What do you think? What do you think you did for the most high God where he owe you something? You crazy. Everything, everything you do for him is a favor for you. What you talking about? Can't be lucky I'll let you do that for me. You me. know what I'm saying? You will be honored. Should be happy to be in my presence. Should charge you a fee. Should charge you a darn fee. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? We look at these things, and it's like our whole view of God is wrong. That's why a person can look at it and say, I can never serve a God that would have me. Because your perspective is wrong. That's God. How are you going to say you can never serve because you don't like something he did? Even if he was wrong about it, how are you going to say you can never serve? This is the man who won the entire show. How are you going to say, I can never? Like, you can do something about it. <laughs> your best bet is to do what the man tells you and argue with him later. You know what I'm saying? Let me at least make it into the kingdom, and then, you know, after that. I'm going to tell him what's on my mind. I mean, if I was a sinner, at least that would be my mind. Say, like, okay, you know what? I don't like nothing that this man doing. I'm going to do exactly what he said, make it into the kingdom. And he promised I'm going to be good. After I'm good, I'm going to let loose on this butt. Right? And at least that mindset, through the process, by obeying, the most I got to show you everything you need to know. You'll be like, oh, man, I was about to cuss you out. But you know what? You all right. I didn't understand that part. I had a lot of questions to ask, but I you understand now. <laughs> I understand now. So. That's how good God is to us. You don't think he'll show you what's going on? You obey him? You can start off against the man. You, 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 if you faithful to it, though. Just ain't none of these people faithful. They just hypocrites. It make a lot of noise. It's Numbers chapter 12. Why can't they make a whole bunch of noise over interracial marriage that God hates so much? Watch this. Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Mm -hmm. For he had and married. After this, we get woman. Luke three. Watch this. And they said, "Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Mm -hmm. Has he not spoken also by us?" Mm -hmm. And the Lord heard it. Now the man, now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which was um, which was upon the face of the earth. Moses was a humble man. He is looking like man. Don't do this to yourself. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to hear. I ain't about to hear argue with. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to hear argue with you about how I'm the man. You know what I'm saying? How I'm God's man. Then why I'm arguing? I ain't going to argue with The man showed up to me in a butt. Now, I ain't, I ain't about to brag about this. The man told me out. He told me. I ain't going to tell you, Aaron. But he told me that I'm going to be like God and you're going to be like a pop. But look, listen. I ain't who's splitting hairs around here. I ain't. He's a meek man. He could have told him all that. He could have opened it up on him like, man, look, you might want to relax. I'm God. Boy, when you look at me, I'm God. He could have said that. That's what God said to him, D. I'm trying to tell you. This is a meek man. He could have gone up to him and looked at him. Boy, you're talking to God right now. You might want to relax. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you that he could say that unless God said it to him. I'm not joking. Like, God said that to him. God said to him clearly, you will be as God to Pharaoh. I mean, as God to Pharaoh, but also, you will be as God and he will be as your mouthpiece talking about Aaron. So when they walk up to him talking this mess, you know Moses and my looking like, y'all tripping. Y'all going crazy. Relax. Keep going. Watch this. Let's see how God come back and be like, yeah, Aaron and uh, Aaron and Miriam, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, I have a problem with his wife too. Watch this. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Uh-huh. Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. Y'all come out here. Let me talk to y'all. And they three came out. Mm -hmm. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. Oh, he said, after y'all three come out, y'all two now. And they both came. What's that game you play? You know what I'm saying? You take a step forward. You know what I'm saying? What, what game is that? You like take a step forward. Red Rover. 
Is it Red Rover? Yeah, I think it is. You take a step forward and, you know what I'm saying, depending on some some criteria, you know what I'm saying, certain people step forward and others don't. No, that's something different. I forgot to know. I know what you're talking about. Though, bro. You know what I'm saying? You play a game. You know what I'm saying? It's like all three of y'all come at everybody step forward. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, no, no. Just y'all two. Take a couple more steps. Have y'all butts on out here. Watch what he say to him. And he said, hear now my words. Uh-huh. If there be a prophet among you. He said, if there be a prophet among you. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. He said, let me explain. Let me let me tell you something. When we deal with God, we're not dealing with somebody who uh, is is trying to mystify us, and trying to trying to keep us in this this mysterious place where nobody understands anything. We're dealing with a God of logic. They came to him. Remember what their argument was. I don't think you should be married to that woman. Trust us. We prophets too. The, the Most High God speak to us too. You're not the only person that God speak to. Moses, we trying to tell you something right now. In other words. We trying to tell you what God wants you. He's to do. speaking to him right now, right? That's his implication. His, his their implication was, we trying to tell you what God is trying to tell you to do. That's why they tell him, you're not the only person that God speak to Moses, right? So they like we prophets too. So the Most High God said, let me help y'all out. Let me define something for y'all. Let me define what a prophet is. If there be a prophet among you, I am gonna speak to him. By a vision or a dream. Right? That defines a prophet. They fit that. They fit that definition. Vision or dream. They fit that. They like, check. Okay. God confirmed. We a prophet. They probably looking at God at that point. See Moses? They looking back at Moses. See? <laughs> Moses is back there just like, oh, man, don't even, don't do too much to him, God. Even right? the book of Psalms called Miriam a prophet. Yeah, she's a prophet. She is a prophet in uh, Exodus, what's that, Exodus 15, right when they came off of the uh, water. She's singing a song. They, she sung a song. Yeah, yeah she's a prophet, right? Moses' whole family was late. What do you think? Uh, if they account? <laughs> I should be charging you a fee, right? That's why Moses is looking like, y'all next to me. Some of that just drip off. That's how the most high God works. You next to a man of God, I mean, some of that stuff just drip off. That's how you go. That's all these nations were so prosperous. Yes. Like Daniel and, you know. Joshua. Giant. How do you think Joshua got in? You think Joshua was the man just because he is the man? Because he's next to Moses. What Moses had to do to get Joshua going? Put his anointing on him. He had to put his spirit on him. He said, give him some of your spirit. So that stuff just drip off. I mean, you just next to a man of God, you drip off. Then you got the nerve to run your darn mouth against him. Moses. I mean, most our God said to him, he said, you know what? If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, I'm going to speak to him. You know, I'm going to do it a vision or I'm going to do it in a darn dream. But what do he say about Moses, though? Because he's just trying to appeal to logic. My, my servant Moses is not so. In other words, I don't speak to Moses like that at all. He's like, when I speak to a prophet, it's going to be through a vision or a dream. That fits y'all, right? Y'all got that. that y'all meet that. Y'all prophets. Defined. Good. We confirm that. But not Moses. That's not how I speak to Moses. How do I speak to Moses? Who is faithful in all mine house. Uh-huh. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. In the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So now, Moses, our God is asking a question. Why did it make sense? You know that when you hear from me, that thing is like cryptic. You kind of got to just let me just repeat what I say because I don't really know. I don't really know what it means. Let me just repeat what I say. You know what I'm saying? It's a vision or a dream. You know what I'm saying? You wake up from a dream or you know what I'm saying? You got a vision or something going to a trance. Most why God spoke to you. That's good. Not to minimize that. But what Moses talked to him is like a man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, how you doing today? Yeah, boy, them some nice shoes. I'll tell you that. Take them sandals off. What, what book was that called, Moses? The Friend of God? It was the Friend of the Most High God. No, the Friend of God. That's probably, probably the, uh, end, the Psalms are the end of Deuteronomy. Yeah. James, right? Probably. Oh, no, James called uh, Abraham the Friend of God. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it is a psalm. I think it is a psalm where it says it's a friend. Um, but you look at it, and that's how you, that, that's how he, he's appealing to lie. He's like, put everything in this appropriate place. You are a prophet. That's very true. 
But you know I don't deal with Moses the way I deal with y'all. Peter had to figure out his vision. And Isaiah and him had to figure oh, out his vision. Did, I mean, that's a good, that's good. That's high up there. You up there. John, he ain't know what he was looking but for. But nobody's talking to God. Though. Nobody's just sitting there like, hell oh, yeah. So, so what do you want me to do? Yeah, just go over there and talk to him. Nobody ain't getting that conversation with God. Y'all ain't getting that conversation I mean, with God. John had a whole book of revelations and stuff. He probably didn't even understand. Cryptic. Visions. Dreams. Whole thing. Nobody's talking to God. Nobody face to face talking to God. Seeing it similar to? Most like God, like, something should make y'all relax. Like, y'all should, y'all should at some point just be able to look at that and be like, mm, he's different. Right? That's logic that he applied. He said, you know what? Let me make sure y'all understand. Moses is different. So why did you not feel uncomfortable running your mouth against a man? Right? Why did, I mean, why didn't you just take a little bit of pause? Like, mm, maybe I should relax. Maybe I should not say this right now. Right? If I was going to say something to him, I'd deal with it. When Moses came out with his Ethiopian wife, Ethiopian wife. Had two sons, I think. Two, yeah. Two sons. Two sons. He came out. He is about to go into Egypt. What happened to you? God was going to kill him. Why was he going to kill him? Because his sons wasn't circumcised. Trust me, if the Most High God had a problem with Moses, that they was going to get dealt with. His son wasn't circumcised. Most High God just got done telling him he going to take Egypt and he going to tell Moses, I mean, tell the Pharaoh all these different things. As soon as he got done telling him that, he said, now I'm about to kill you. Moses didn't even get to Egypt yet to do any of the stuff he just told him to do. The Most High God was like, oh, now plan just cut short. Your sons ain't circumcised. Trust me, if the Most High God was going to deal with him, he'll deal with him. Right? And that ain't to say that you can't say that a person that you think is the man of God is wrong. You should. Just watch how you're talking to the man of God. Don't walk up to him and be like, listen, what I'm telling you is from God. That's where you mess up. Ask the question. Is it supposed to be this way? This is what the books say. This is what you're doing. Don't look right. Right? They come to him talking about, mm, listen, God is telling. They're they implying God is telling us to tell you that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. <laughs> Sit your butt down. Most like I'm looking at you. And when I talk to you, it's a bit in a dream. You didn't get that in a vision or a dream. You might want to shut your mouth. Right? He took his son. He ain't about to get killed because he didn't circumcise his sons. You understand that? Like, that's... That's a that's a big deal for the most high God. It seems a little iffy if your prophet come to you and telling you what God said, and if he don't specify the vision or the dream, you um, might not want to. Mm, I'm, <laughs> mm, I'm gonna go ahead and step aside right now. I'm gonna go ahead and go talk to my wife real quick, my Ethiopian wife. I'm gonna go ahead and holler at her real quick. Y'all spend some time out here. Most high God, most high God turned uh, Miriam to a leprous over this conversation. All right. And notice what, and look at this. Go to uh, go to Exodus uh, thirty, uh, Exodus uh, thirty two. This is Exodus thirty two. Give me like verse seven. Exodus thirty two. Exodus chapter thirty two, verse seven. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Uh huh. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and mm-hmm. have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them. He said them. that my wrath may wax hot against them. What does that mean? You're about to kill them. I'm about to kill all the Israelites, right? And then watch what he say next. And that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. He said, I'm going to make of who a great nation? Of you a great nation, Moses. Moses had an Ethiopian wife. Moses, like God looked at him and said, don't worry, I'll take your kids and make a great nation. Your half Ethiopian kid. He said, I'll make a great nation out of you. Still would have kept all his promises. Still would have kept his promises. They still would have been Israelites. Still sons of uh, Abraham. Still sons of Abraham. We don't see here and say, you know what I'm saying? Most high God is against interracial marriage. That's a lie. He's against marrying a Canaanite. Don't you make a covenant, show no mercy to a Canaanite. Now, if you got a Canaanite in your midst, now I ain't going to sit here and tell you. I'm going to tell you, you might want to leave that alone. That's our law. 
All right, you got you find out somebody a Canaanite, you might want to leave their butt alone. That's our law. All right? That's our law. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say nothing against that. You messing with one of these Gentiles, you better shut your darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? You can go get you a Gentile if you want to get you a Gentile. Is that what you into? You know what I'm saying? Go get you a Gentile. Get what make you happy. Get something that you can deal with. Don't let these people bully you into marrying something, somebody that you can't deal with or something you can't deal with. Not everybody built for a nice black woman. Black women run over all these, you know what I'm saying? Some of these people, black women run your butt darn over. And then leave your butt. Because these black women like a strong man. They looking for a Hebrew. A lot of some of these black women, they looking for a darn Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? They looking for somebody, you know what I'm saying? Look, you, you got to be. And now if you're a Hebrew and you just, you know what I'm saying? You just ain't got that in you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? I just need me, you know what I'm saying? Something else. They go get you something else. Some not every Hebrew are built like you know, warrior style. You know what I'm saying? Some of us were delicate. You know what I'm saying? You delicate, go get you a little Gentile sometime. You know what I'm saying? Because our, our, our women have been made, you know what I'm saying? They've been made to where, you know what I'm saying? They have to, they have to care for more things. You know what I'm saying? Like our women, our men and women in a, in, a, in a position where they can't just worry about, you know what I'm saying? They can't just worry about being a wife. You know what I'm saying? They, they are raised by a mama. You know what I'm saying? Who she is the only one. Daddy was on crack, or daddy left, or daddy was in jail, and daddy was just a dog. Right? That's what, I mean, that's a generation that we coming from. Right? And so you get through one or two or three generations of that, you develop a stronger woman. So it take, it take more to, to, to impress a stronger woman. Right? If a woman, if I figure it out and I don't trust and I know I, I got to get it on my own, you know what I'm saying? That, that's how I go. It take more. You got to show her I'm a man. She ain't going to take nobody who's walking up just like, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, uh, well, I think we can do it together and this and that. No, she ain't going to take it. She, she'll run right over that. She'll think she like it at first. She'll run right through that, though. She'll run right through that because she can't trust that. She can't trust the I think. Her mama had to raise her by herself. You understand? Like, like her mama's mama raised her mama by herself. She can't trust the I think. Dad's left in her family. You know what I'm saying? Just intuitively. She ain't even putting all this together in her mind. Intuitively, that she just can't trust. That don't even feel right. She want to like it because it look like what it is on TV, but she it's just after a while, maybe a year pass, that thing just ain't, don't even feel right to her. She run through that. You know what I'm saying? She going to on, on, chew you out, nag you, all this different stuff. She going to say all types of stuff. Your butt going to get out of it. She don't know what she's doing, but she weeding it out. She said, I need something stronger. In her mind, intuitively, she said, I need something stronger. That's the type of woman you show up in there, you're like, I'm a man, kick down the darn door, that's how we run it thing. She gonna argue and fuss and test you and all that. After a while, she gonna give up and be like, he passed all the tests. She don't know she testing you. In her mind, she just upset that he, this man think he coming in, he gonna run my house. I always ran my own stuff. So after a while, she, I mean, she thinking in her mind, she thinking, who does he think he is? But deep down, she pass, he passing tests. That's what she doing. She, she just throwing tests out. She don't even know she doing. She just throwing tests. She don't try to hit you and put your hands on there, all types of stuff, right? You as a man, you be like, you better relax. Don't you ever? I never put my hands on you, and don't you ever put your hands on me. You cut that stuff out. Just look in her eye, right? I'm a man, and you ain't gotta worry about it. It's we, you don't have to worry. We gonna be out to take care, cause I'ma do it. That's a man. You put a man like that, she gonna sit her butt down. She gonna listen to everything he say. She gonna let her guard down. But our problem is, our men have been emasculated and our women have had to be more right so that woman you got to show her something you got to go through a soup you want to crack a wall or two you can't darn give up you want I mean or you take you know what I'm saying some of these black women not all of them but some of the black women that, that's just what you gonna have to come through you know what I'm saying and not everybody built for that you ain't built for that. that's fine you know what I'm saying because on oh, same thing on their end we got some on the other end we've been made to compromise to belittle ourselves, right? To become subservient to that strong black woman, right? We've been made to do all these things, so when that woman see it, she don't trust it. So that comes off to us as, man, you know, these black girls, man, they just, they just always, you know what I'm saying, drama and always this and always that. That's just how we see it, right? That's okay, you know what I'm saying? It's just that we haven't been raised in our culture to be more of a man, be more of a traditional Hebrew man, that is. You still a man? Right? You're still a man. You can still get it. You can still run a household. But you're just not aggressive like that. You're not what she need. And she's not what you need. Go get you a Gentile. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Go find you a Gentile. Because your style, you've been raised by these white folks. You've been raised by their TV. Your mama told 
you how to be that way because that's what she see on TV. And she still had to raise your, your manly butt by herself. You learn from a woman. Go get you a Gentile. You'll be all right. Right? They don't require as much in that space. They require a whole different. You're going to have a whole other set of problems. You all right? Other set of right? You're going to have a whole other set of problems, but that's all right. I don't if like that's that. easier for you, you deal with it. I don't it. like the unknown. If it's <laughs> not, then you take you a black woman. But whatever it is, get what you like. Because the main thing you don't want to do is end up marrying one of these people and divorcing them. You get what you like, get what you can deal with, or don't mess with nobody at all. It's always an option. Right? But don't let these people bully you into feeling like, you know what I'm saying, you got to marry something that you don't like or marry something that you don't want. Whatever your preference is. I don't care if you're marrying them from looks. I don't care if you're marrying them from personality. I don't care if you're marrying them from money. I don't care about any of that. You marry a person... We all make sure y'all mutually agree to marry for whatever reason y'all want to marry. All I'm saying is, y'all stay y'all darn butts together. <laughs> so get what you can deal with. If you know you can't deal with somebody who ain't got money, don't kid yourself. Be like, well, the pressure is to fall in love. I don't care nothing about no fall in no darn love. You don't know what love is. Love is sitting there and staying through it. No matter what the circumstances is. Some of our people got darn arranged. You think they walked into it in love? No, they fell in love. They fell into commitment. Somebody put them into it and they said, you know what? This is it. That's all we got. We're going to make this thing work. And it worked. It is our perspective that we're looking for an emotion to back up our feeling. I mean, back up our, uh, our action. No, that emotion is to motivate you. It's not to make the decision for you. That's all emotion did. Just a motivator. It's, it's emotion are put there to protect us. You know what I'm saying? When you get sad, it's supposed, it's supposed to motivate you to think through things. Right? To figure things out. Right? When you're angry, it's supposed to motivate you to find a solution. It ain't supposed to motivate you to punch nobody or kill nobody. Right? It's supposed to motivate you. It's supposed to give you energy. When you get mad, you get energy. It's supposed to give you energy to find a solution. Do something different. Right? That's when some people, they go, they get in, they get mad. My wife, she get mad. She start cleaning the darn house like you've never seen before. How did this get clean? She back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what, you know what, I'm that's what energy do. You're supposed to take that energy and you apply it to a solution for your anger. You know what I'm saying? Even happy, when you're happy. Energy. You know what I'm saying? It's just different ways of putting your energy towards what you need to do. We just misuse the emotions. Right? We get mad and we lash out. We get sad and we want to we wanna, we wanna hurt ourselves. We want to isolate ourselves and all these different things. You know what I'm saying? We get disappointed we want to isolate ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We get happy, we want to go do something stupid or frivolous. Right? We waste the energy that God gave us for specific things to try to settle things out and figure it out. Because we let an emotion make a decision. That's not what they're there for. You know what I'm saying? You don't get happy and marry somebody. Right? You marry somebody and you let the happiness carry you through the rough times. Right? You remember that, you know, you know what? She really made me happy at that time. Stuff real bad right now and I'm sad right now. Let me use that to think through a solution. Right? Let these people tell you marry who you need to marry. Grab, uh, grab Leviticus 24, uh, verse 10 for me. I don't even know what this is. Leviticus 24, verse 10. <clears throat> what is that? I have it written down there. 24, 24. Um, 24 feels like I should know exactly what 24 is, right? It definitely does. 23 is the... Uh, it's a feast. It's a feast. I don't know what you're for it. That thing ain't even coming to mind right now. I have it written down though, so it must. It's probably like miscellaneous. <laughs> it might be. A little adultery here, a little don't do this here. Oh, I was completely wrong. Talk about the showbread. The biggest 24? Mm, yeah. Okay, no, I don't know. I don't know what that the is. The beginning of it, and then you got. What verse ten? What verse ten say? Uh, and the son of the Ishmaelitish woman. Who oh yeah, that's what I wanted to. It's Leviticus chapter twenty-four, verse uh, verse uh, ten. Watch this. And the son of an Ishmaelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian. His father was what? An Egyptian. Okay. Keep going. Went out among the children of Israel. Uh huh. And this son of the Ishmaelitish woman. And the man of Israel strove together in the camp. And the Ishmaelitish woman, Ishmaelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. Mm -hmm. And they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shalomith. Mm 
So notice that his mama was an is, uh, is, uh, uh, Israelite, all right? And the, uh, the uh, dad was an Egyptian. Notice that they call him the son of the woman. They don't call him no Israelite because his dad was an Egyptian. Even when they talk about it, he said he went out among the Israelites, all right? They separate him from the Israelites because his dad was an Egyptian. His mama was an Israelite. Don't let these people try to tell you what your daddy is. That's what make. That's what make you. Right? Why does that make sense? Because in terms of our culture, the lineage, the heritage came from the fathers. Then the heritage came from the fathers. So if I pass down, right? If I pass down my 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 million dollar home, it's gonna go to my son. Right. And, and it's gonna genealogy. come from the father. That's just how all our stuff was. And all the genealogies was the son of this and the son of that. His so son, that's how son. everything gets passed down. My last name gets passed down to my son. My ownership gets passed down to my son. Who I am gets passed down to my son. And what I am your gets fathers, passed down to my son. The tribe of Judah and their fathers and their fathers and that's how it is. It's always based off of the father. Yeah, right? Sure so that's what made a man. That's what made a man a a um uh, Hebrew or or whatnot. It's just the fact that the father did. In uh, the New the Acts, Timothy was a uh, his mom was a Hebrew, but his dad was a Greek, and they didn't really they didn't consider. Yeah, that's another example. Yeah, he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? They were looking like him. Like uh, his butt don't need to be circumcised. You want to bring him around here? Yeah. Cause they're looking at him like, oh, he's a Gentile. I don't care what he mixed with. He's a Gentile, right? That's a daddy. We know a daddy. It, it, no, he's a Gentile. That's how we looked at it. Who is your pops? Right? Because we looked at Pop got to run things. If you come from the man that run things, I mean, that just got that. You, you're a Gentile. Right? Don't let these people tell you that interracial marriage is wrong. There wouldn't have been nothing wrong with this kid coming up. He's just not an Israelite. He's an Egyptian. Right? And he blasphemed the most high God, so he got to die. <laughs> that thing, that thing got eat. His butt got to go. Grab uh, Genesis for me. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Right? That's what it's all about. The man can take a man from the ground, from dirt, and make him a man. You don't think that the, the same human being that come from that same man could be something that's fit for marriage for the most high God? That's insane. Like the, the stuff that we come up with, it ain't in our book. Our book don't teach it. Only reason I go to that because you can look at uh, look at what John say, and he said the Most High God can make sons and daughters from this rock. We know we can. He made a man from dirt. And you gonna tell me if he made the man from dirt? You gonna tell me a white woman ain't good enough for a black man? A black man ain't good enough for a white woman? A Japanese Mexican girl ain't good enough for us? If she serve the most high God and she make you happy, then do it. You think you can make her happy and you will be there for her and you ain't going to give up on her, you ain't going to cheat on her, you ain't going to, then do it. If you're going to do any of those things, none of that stuff ain't going to line up, then leave it alone. I don't care what rap, I care if she's black or white. Mexican, Japanese, Puerto Rico, right? Whatever she is, you leave that thing alone. Just do, just, the whole thing, just get what you can handle and take care of. Luke 3. I almost forgot. Let's grab Luke 3 and then we'll get up out of here. This is Luke chapter 3. We ain't got to get the whole thing. Get a... Start at about verse. Wow, let's just get the whole thing. Get about, about verse. What to start off with? Like 19, 15, 16. This is Luke chapter 3, verse... Uh, let's see what I want because I don't really know for sure. Start at the beginning of that thing. It should say something like... Uh, you know what I'm saying? He was supposed to be 30. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was 30 as it's supposed or something. Luke 3, 23. 
23. It's Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Watch this. And Yahshua himself began about 30, year, 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, mm -hmm. which was the son of Heli, Heli mm -hmm. which was the son of Metat, mm -hmm. which was the son of Levi, mm -hmm. which was the son of Melchi, which mm -hmm. was the son of Jana, mm -hmm. which was the son of Joseph, mm -hmm. which was the son of Matthias, mm -hmm. which was the son of Amos, mm -hmm. which was the son of Nahum, mm -hmm. which was the son of Esli, which was the son of Nage, mm -hmm. Nage, which was the son of Maath, which was the son of Matthias, mm -hmm. which was the son of... What, what do we notice so far with all this? Simei is the son of... These son of, of, and his name is Men, ain't it? He's a Men, yeah. I mean, just stop me when a woman get involved. Just keep going. It's Greek language ruining our names, though. <laughs> which was the son of Shimei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, mm -hmm. which was the son of jo Joanna, which was the son of Risa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Sheltiel, mm -hmm. which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosham, which was the son of Elmodam, Elmodam, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Josi, which was the son of Eliezer, which was the son of Jehoram, which was the son of Metat, Metat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Joan, Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Melissa, which was the son of Menan, which was the son of Meditha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz. Uh-oh, watch this which was the son of Sal Salmon, which was the son of Naasan, which uh -huh. was the son of Aminadab, uh -huh. which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Eshram, which was the son of Phares, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Terah, mm -hmm. which was the son of Nahor, Nahor mm -hmm. which was the son of Serach, which was the son of Regu, which was the son of Peleg, which was the son of Eber, mm -hmm. which was the son of Sala, which was the son of Canaan, mm -hmm. which was the son of Arpachshad, which mm -hmm. was the son of Shem, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, mm -hmm. which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, uh -oh. which was the son of Mahaleliel, uh -oh. which was the son of Canaan, which uh -oh. was the son of Enosh, uh -oh. which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam. Uh-oh. Which was the son of God. Which was the son of who? God. You know why it's important for us to trace that all the way back? Because if the lineage came from the mama, we would have to talk about some dirt. <laughs> How are you going to tie it back to the father unless you go through the father? Right? These people light up our whole book by teaching us this foolishness. It's the Jewish people that teach that foolishness. Right? Your lineage got to go through your mother. That was what the Jewish people would teach. Lineage got to go through the mother. You know what they try to teach you? Trace yourself back to some dirt. Trace yourself back to the ground. He made the man out of dirt, didn't he? And then he, he put his spirit in him, his essence in him. And it said he the son of who? You got to trace yourself back to dirt. Right? There's only one way to look at this. Right? And that ain't even what I really wanted. I thought, oh, I wanted Matthew. Because I, uh, I think it was Matthew. I thought it was Luke. But I think it's Matthew. It'll tell you, when it tell you uh, Boaz, it'll say it was Boaz by uh, Ruth. By uh, Moab. Ruth. I mean, by, uh, by uh, Moabitess. Uh, yeah, Ruth, the Moabitess woman. Right? And then when it, uh, when it tells you... Uh, when it tells you, uh, what's Boaz's daddy name? Obed. Obed. When they tell you Obed, was it Obed? Boaz. Obed. She didn't say it right there. No. It was, uh, who was Boaz's dad? Obed was Boaz's son. Uh, so Solomon. That's what it was. Solomon, yeah. When they tell you, when they tell you about Solomon, then it's going to tell you Salmon. I think it's how you pronounce it. You know what I'm saying? Salmon. When they tell you about Salmon, you know what I'm saying? It's going to tell you that his wife was Ra uh, Rahab. Rahab, yeah. Yeah. Rahab. Uh, right? 
But in the old testament, it's gonna tell you Rahab. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's gonna tell you that was his wife. Both of them to Gentiles. Ruth and Rahab. Both of them Gentiles. Right? Ruth was from Moabite, and Rahab was a Canaanite. Same ones we is told, no mercy. Right? Don't strike a deal with them. Alright, you know what she did? We'll talk about what she did. We ain't gonna get into it right now. We'll talk about what she did. Right? We'll look at it. This is what the most high God is looking for. Somebody who will get in there, get the details, and not run their mouth about what they say God told them. One thing, let me tell you something. I ain't cheaping that thing up. I, I mean, that's just how I am. I don't even at work. I'm not cheapening up anything that I say. I ain't about to tell you I like you, I like you, I love you a whole bunch of times. Just because when I tell you, it ain't going to mean nothing. I'm going to tell you when I mean it. Yeah. Right? Y'all ain't going to hear me talking about, oh, God told me. Well, you know, God moved on my spirit and told me. You're not going to hear that. You know what you're going to hear me say? That was the word say. Because I mean it, and I can show you that. That way, if the most I got ever choose to speak to me, y'all hear me say, God told me, it's time to move. You know what I'm talking about? You didn't know, because you know. I ain't, you know he don't be talking that foolishness. That's it. All his whole time, his old, all his 60 years, God willing. He didn't told us about book. Right? If one day most of God decided to speak, I didn't want y'all to know. It's time to move. Get that thing going. That thing ain't gonna be cheap. Right? And my, honestly, I'm quite fine with God never speaking to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm quite fine with just going with the book say speak to somebody else and he can tell it to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm quite fine with that. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? It's like you don't want to cheapen God. That, that's crazy. Because the only thing that's going to happen is he's going to make a fool out of you. Because you're making a fool out of yourself. You're going to be a liar. Why? For what? Just do what the man say. It's simpler. I promise it. It's simpler. And I don't promise just because I promise. I promise because the book say it. Right? I can't. If I said it, it don't mean nothing. I'm telling you what the book say book say it's simple it's easy you say it's, it's the yoke is light go ahead and put it on that's easy work is what he's saying it's work it's easy work much better than what you headed for right much better than what you headed for people just thinking like well right now i can have a whole lot of fun and enjoy life your butt ain't enjoy life you miserable you miserable all these kids is medicated They got to be high 24-7, drunk 24-7, popping pills 24-7 just to get through life. And they're angry and miserable. Y'all not foolish. I see people every day at work miserable. They miserable on the job, mad at the bosses, mad at me. They looking like, I ain't mad at nobody. I'm not mad at nobody. We can work through all this. I ain't holding no grudge to get to I'm not miserable. I got the love of God. What am I going to do? What's going to keep me from it? Nothing. Disobedience. That's about it. You obey the most of God. Can't nothing keep you from the love of him. That's crazy. All right? Y'all marry what y'all need to marry. Get what you want. Any questions? Let's go ahead and pray out. I wanted to end it off. I wanted to finish out seven. We did a little bit too much talking, so we'll... We'll get to it next week, but uh, we'll go ahead and